Happy Friday! Today I'm going to be doing my first ever monthly wrap up and I'm going to tell you everything that I read in the whole month of August, which was pretty bloody impressive this month if you ask me. So today I am drinking shandy by my shelf and I've also spilt shandy on my shelf. And I'm going to be drinking my shandy with a straw because I've got some banging lip gloss on today. In this video, I'm going to run you through the 17 and two halves books that I read in the month of August. If we're being accurate, I only read 14 and two halves books in August, but there are three books that I read in July that I somehow managed to not talk about in any of the other videos that I did in July, so I'm just sticking them on the end here. One of the last books I read in July was called Watching Edie by Camilla Way. Now, I really want to have something nice to say about this book, but I just don't. It's a thriller all leading up to one traumatic flashback incident. I'm going to leave it at that for now because I don't want to give you any spoilers, but I did write a full review which I will link to, and in that I explained properly what happened in this book and why I hated it so much. The day after I read that one, I read a much better thriller, which was Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes. It's about a serial killer, but it's written from the point of view of the serial killer, and he's strangely charming. And you just continue to root for this guy who is quite clearly the bad guy. I just, I loved it. And I really hope the author writes more about this character because he is so strangely enchanting. Okay, the last book that I read in July was How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather. This is a really fun YA, I got to interview the author, so I will link in the description box to my interview with her. She got to tell me all about being descended from Cotton Mather, who was one of the key instigators of the Salem Witch Trials. This book is about a protagonist, who is also descended from Cotton Mather, moving to Salem, where a lot of her classmates are descended from the witches that were hung, and there's magic, and there's sexy ghosts. I really liked this one, it was good. Okay, now we actually are into August, and the first book I read was Age of Consent by Marty Lineback. I would really recommend it. It's about a woman who is testifying against a man who sexually abused her decades before. The twist being that this man is now married to her mother, who is siding with him in the court case. So a lot of it is about really exploring that mother-daughter relationship. But of course, as you can guess from the title, a lot of it is also about the age of consent and this relationship this woman had decades before, which a court might arguably say was a consensual relationship. But from reading the flashbacks, through the eyes of a child, it is very, very clearly not. Then I read some childhood classics. I started with The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Zubri Foufoudi, Je m'appelle Schmoufoudi, I think that's his name. I have read that one before years and years ago, but I feel like I read it very differently. Whatever stage of your life you're in, the messages from this book are going to speak to you in a slightly different way, and it's just really lovely. It will make you cry, but it's just gorgeous. I borrowed that one from my friend Kelsey, who you may remember from Books and Boobs. It's her favourite childhood book, and in exchange I gave her one of my favourites, which is Marianne Dreams by Catherine Storr. And I hadn't read this one in years, so I didn't remember much about it other than that I loved it. But Kelsey kept texting me like, Emma, this book is terrifying and creepy, why did you give it to me? So then I reread it, and she was right. It's about a young girl who gets very ill, and while she's stuck in bed, she starts drawing these pictures with an indelible pencil. But then when she goes to sleep, everything she drew in the picture comes to life. Sounds harmless and magical, but it isn't. It's really scary. Next up, Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton. It's from the point of view of astronauts who are returning from a mission to Jupiter, and on the way back, all their communications from Earth go blank. So they are now faced with another slow year's travel back towards an Earth that doesn't seem to have any life left on it. It's kind of a nightmare book, but it's really beautifully written, so definitely recommend. Oh, and I read Good Morning Midnight as book one of my reading decathlon, where you have to read 10 books in 10 days. Love Sick was book two. This is a book full of doodles by Jessie Cave. You might follow her on Instagram. If you don't, you should, because she's so good. I'll put her handle down there somewhere. And this book is so adorable. It's full of these really cute little pictures about love, friendship. I found myself taking pictures of some of the pages and sending them to my friends, being like, this is so us. Another decathlon read was Control and Delete by Emma Gannon, which was so bloody good that I made a whole video about it, so I will link to that somewhere up there, down there, I don't know where it's going to be on the screen. You can see that I filled it with post-it notes where I loved it, and basically this book is just so relatable and so inspirational, and you should watch my video rambling on about it if you want to know more. All I will tell you now is you will love it. I promise you will love it. 
then I read Trumpet by Jackie Kay for the Banging Book Club, and I will do a video soon about this one. It's about a fictional, famous jazz trumpeter who dies right before the book starts, and at his autopsy it's revealed that he is transgender, which only his wife knew, not even his son knew. It's about so many things. It is about gender, it is about trans issues, it's also about race, it's also about the media and how misleading it can be, it's about deception, it's about families, it's just a really great book. And I read a post-secret book. I used to get these books for my birthdays and Christmases years ago and i just completely kind of forgotten about them. Post-secret, if you don't know, is a project where this guy Frank Warren sent out these blank postcards that people could fill in with their secrets and send them back in. Some of them you read and you're like, yes, spot on, that's so me, and then some of them seem totally bizarre and weird. And it's all just about learning about other humans, I guess, and how similar we can be and how different we can be and how much we can have going on underneath the surface. Embroideries by Majan Satrapi. Majan Satrapi is the author of Persepolis, which I read not too long ago and loved it. Embroideries is very different. It's very funny, this one. It all takes place in one conversation between Majan and a few of her female family members, and they're all talking about their sex lives, basically. And I just loved it. It's funny, it's enlightening, it's just absolutely brilliant. We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is the transcript of her very successful TED talk, and it's wonderful seeing it written down. I've heard the TED talk before but being able to read it and read some of the sentences over and over again meant that I could really absorb it. I never needed any convincing that we should all be feminists but I still learnt so much from Adichie's words so definitely get this one. Sorry if the background just totally jumped, my card was full and I had to change it and move the camera and now I feel like it's very different. It is isn't it? It's moved all the way over, just all the way over but we're just going to deal with it. <sighs> my legs are sweating. Okay, so another book that I read this month, which was great, was Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbue. This book is about a Cameroonian couple who come to the States in pursuit of the American dream and slowly watch it fall apart. I read an article describing it as the book that Donald Trump should read, and I seriously wish that he would, because it gives a really interesting insight to the US immigrant experience. You only get tiny glimpses of Cameroon throughout the novel, but I did really enjoy those glimpses of what it's like and how different it is to the States, because it doesn't straightforwardly paint one as better than the other. The main characters are very sure that they will have better opportunities in the States, but they still have very nostalgic thoughts about the community aspect of Cameroon that doesn't exist in the States. I read a handful of really great books this summer, so I keep saying, this was my number one pick of the summer, and then I read something else and say that, but so far, Behold the Dreamers was my number one pick of the summer, maybe joint with some of the other ones that I've mentioned, but it's fantastic. Then I finished Rebellion, which I had started last month, but then I got sidetracked by reading other books. This is another YA novel, it's very, very Hunger Games-y, so if you liked that, this will be perfect for you. To be honest, dystopian YA isn't really my favourite genre, so that's the only thing holding me back from really gushing about this book. But if you do like things like The Hunger Games, then I have no doubt you will love this one. It paints a very convincing and frightening dystopian world that will totally absorb you, so if you're looking for something like this, May I recommend this one? <laughs> and then my 10th decathlon book was Bitch Planet, which is a feminist graphic novel, which I absolutely loved. It's basically about a women's prison, which is set on another planet. Women are banished there for all kinds of reasons, being too fat, too thin, too sexual, too virginal. It's very upfront in the political message it is trying to send, which I'm cool with because it's a great message. And this is only book one. There's a book two, and I'm definitely gonna get it. So that's a pretty big achievement considering that I was never even slightly interested in graphic novels a few months ago. Okay, the 17th and final book that I completed in August was Closer by Sarah Barmack. If the cover alone hasn't made it clear enough what this book is about, the subtitle is Notes from the Orgasmic Frontier of Female Sexuality. And this book was great, it was really really great. It's filled with the science of sex, the history of how sex was studied, as well as really interesting feminist discussion on what all of that means for women today. Now my camera's overheating again, ugh. But those were the 17 books, so now we're just onto the two halves, books that I'm halfway through both of them. One is I Am Malala, and the other one, I don't have because it's on my Kindle, is A Boy Made From Blocks. And so far I'm really liking both of them, but I haven't got very far through either, so I will have to tell you in my September wrap up probably. You already know what this one's about, I don't need to tell you about it, and A Boy Made From Blocks is about a father bonding with his autistic son. So, I'm going to turn off my camera before it catches fire, but thank you for sticking with me through my whole August wrap up. 
drinking almost a whole shandy by myself, except for the part that I spilt on myself. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit like on this video and comment below if you read any of these books and what you thought of them, and follow me anywhere else on the internet. My social links coming up next. See you next time. Hi there! Today I am here to talk about a super exciting book, Control Alt Delete by Emma Gannon. Emma Gannon was born in 1989, the same year as the World Wide Web. So this book is her story of literally growing up alongside the internet. <laughs>